All right, Shalom. Okay, first off, I want to say all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, double honors to the apostles and elders of GMS, and uh, to the uh, elect out there. I want to say Shalom. Okay, I want to say Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Raka Kodash. All right, now, um, uh, this is GMS Precepts. My name is Najel Khad. As you can see, I got Romans 18 queued up already. Um, but, I, you know, the pretty much the premise of the video uh I, I don't have a title as of yet i'll think of one through the spirit when i put this video up but the uh, premise of the video is going to be basically um the the uh rewards that we're going to receive and the price to get those rewards okay because the price that we're we, we the things that we're going to have to go through to get those rewards is going to be very uh, difficult man all right all right but at the end of the day when we receive it it's going to be worthwhile okay and we're going to look back just like this scripture basically pretty much says we're, we're gonna you know we're gonna look back and and and, and you know for what we're going to receive to what we had to go through is going to be un uh, uncomparable or incomparable okay all right, and I'll just let let the scripture speak. This is uh, Romans eight verse eighteen. <clears throat> it says, "For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, okay, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us." All right, so it says, "Yeah, it says, for I reckon that the sufferings, okay, the elect are going to go through sufferings, okay." In order to receive all the promises and 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 uh and the glory that we're gonna receive, all the blessings, manifold blessings that we're gonna receive, we're gonna have to go through sufferings first on this side to receive it. Okay, all right. That's why it tells you. Uh, matter of fact, let's get into words. What's the, what's the word suffering? It means. Let this dude say it. G okay pathema it means that which one suffers or has suffered externally a suffering misfortune calamity evil affliction of the sufferings of Yahweh Shai which we're gonna have to go through as well okay all right whatever Yahweh Shai had to go through he was our example we're gonna and we're going in the stead of Yahweh Shai just like he suffered, we shall suffer as well. Also, the afflictions which Christians must undergo in behalf of the same cause which I wish I patiently endured. See, basically the same thing. I didn't even read that part yet, but uh, basically the same thing. Okay, of enduring, undergoing suffering of an inward state and affliction or passion. Right. So suffering is is a uh, is 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 a uh, what the elect have to go through. Okay. Suffering is something that the elect must go through. Okay, so, um, so it reads, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to, compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Okay. So what we're gonna receive in the kingdom, because you gotta remember, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna receive the so-called. I mean, where, as far as the blessings, where do I begin? Okay, you're gonna have. Let's 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 start with the family. Okay, you're gonna have children that are gonna be totally safe. You don't have to worry about them being shot down by the police. You don't have to worry about them being uh, indoctrinated in in your in your public schools. You don't have to worry about them being being uh, molested by 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 Esau by the Edomites, all right. Your woman, you know, you don't have to, and, and they're gonna be totally righteous, okay. Your woman, as far as your woman, we'll finally have women because right now we don't have women, okay. <clears throat> we will have women that are totally righteous that, um, uh, that 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 are uh our our pillar of rest, okay. That are that uh, are are sub are submissive on, on to their man that listens to their man that calls him Lord. I mean, this is things I can't even imagine. Okay, I don't I don't have a kid, but um, 
uh, you know, shit, I don't have a woman either, but, um, you know, as far as a woman listening to you and not arguing, all right, and being totally righteous with you, man, and you're going to have thousands of them, man, and they're going to be, it, 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 you know, that's, that's just one aspect as far as the family. Then you're going to have, well, let's, let's, let's go to the slaves, man. Finally, the other nations will be un, under subjection under you through the power of Yahweh Bashim Shai. The Most High is going to allow us to have these other nations are under subjection. Okay. All right. You're going to have wealth, but you're, you're not, you're not going to have to worry about, uh, uh, money or a paycheck or going to fucking work f for 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 so-called white man or whatever nation all right then the wisdom you you you're, you're going to know all things all right as far as uh sin we're not going to go off anymore all the laws statutes and commandments will be in our inward parts that's that's a promise also that's part of that second covenant so the glory that we we're, we're going to receive are manifold man also, uh, another blessing is we're going to have pure hatred for the other nations, man. Pure hatred for, 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 for the Edomites, okay? But all the things that, that we're going to receive in the kingdom are are, are manifold. So, and, and then we're going to look back and be like, yo, I got all this. It's, it's like being a, uh, it's like working at ShopRite and you're a bagger, but, but, but you get $100 an hour, okay? Plus overtime. Okay, plus benefits, and you ain't get taxed that much. You're gonna look back and be like, "Damn, I'm doing, I'm bagging fucking groceries, and I got, this, I got this much." You know. So that's that's how it's gonna be. All right. So this is Acts 14 and 22. It says, "Confirming, confirming the souls of the disciples, and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of heaven." So we got to go through a lot to get that, man. Okay? And exhorting them to continue in the faith. And that's what the apostles uh, uh, and elders do daily, man. What do they do? They exhort us to continue in the faith. They exhort us, all right, to go uh, to, 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 to go out there and, and, and teach, to, to do shows during the week, to be constantly in this, man. All right? Recently, uh, I believe it was, yeah, it was, it was yesterday, the, you know, the spirit got on Apostle Tahar to 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 basically you know push push brothers and exhort brothers even more to continue in the faith con to continue doing shows all right i don't care if you do one show a week or 10 shows a week i know if you saw that video you got you know you 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 got the message okay so that's what the apostles do the spirit do what do they do they 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 exhort us to continue in the faith that we must do much tribulation enter into the kingdom of heaven so it's not going to be an easy thing okay but i'm gonna go back to romans in hindsight when you look back at it it's gonna be damn i got all this for this okay because you know and it, 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 it you know it's known matter of fact that's the next scripture i got in sirach the second chapter okay in order to receive all the blessings that we're going to receive we're going to have to we're going to have to go through a lot Okay, and our, our number one example is our Lord, Yahweh Shai. So it reads, this is uh, an Apocrypha, uh, Ecclesiasticus uh, 2, verse 1. It says, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure. Now, if you look up the word endure, it means to what? To make hard, to, 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 to strengthen. All right, to endure is not something. Uh, it's not a light process. It's a. It's a. It's a difficult uh, process. It's a troublesome process. Okay. Okay. To endure means to make hard or to make stronger. So it says, "Set thy heart aright, set thy mind aright, and constantly endure, and make not haste in the time of trouble. Cleave unto him and depart not, that thou mayest be increased." At the last end, and and ultimately that's going into what being, um, being uh beamed up in into those chariots, because that's that's going to be the last that's going to be, uh, the uh, our last end. All right, 
it's either you're going to be beamed up in those chariots or you're going to be burnt up by the missiles okay all right and i think i'll take that uh I, I think i'll go with uh being beamed up in those chariots and being delivered out of here out of america okay all right now but going into the promises now I'm going to go into Genesis, the 17th chapter, because this is what the Most High promised us from the beginning, man. All right. Starting with our forefathers, starting with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Most High promised us all the gifts and blessings that, that are going to, uh, that are for his chosen. Okay. Because uh, contrary to what you Christians believe, uh, you know, who you even call God has a chosen uh, uh, he has a chosen he has a chosen seed okay and it's not all people man all right his chosen seed are the israelites okay shit his chosen seed his his chosen seed or i mean if you want to get technical it goes all the way back to, to adam because he he chose the, the adamites out of uh all nations at that time Okay. All right, but continuing it says this is Genesis seventeen and five. It says, Neither shall thy name be any any more be called neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham. Fucking glasses. Can't fucking see shit. It says, Neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham. But thy name shall be called I'm sorry, neither shall thy name any more be called Abram. But thy name shall be called Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. All right. Now, Abraham or Abraham is father of many. Abram is father exalted. Okay. That's why it says a father of many nations have I made thee. Matter of fact, let me get it. Abraham, 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 Abraham. Okay, father of multitude, chief of a multitude. Okay, Abba Raham. Okay, that's why he said, uh, for a father of many nations have I made thee. Okay, let me get Abram. Abba Ram, Abba Ram, father exalted. Okay, exalted father. All right, so. All right. It says, "Father, for a father of many nations have I made thee." And no, this does not mean every nation on the planet Earth. Okay, it means the nations, meaning um, meaning the Israelites. Okay, because we're gonna be so exceeding fruitful. We're comp each tribe is compared to all. It's like its own nation. Okay, because of this man's seed. Uh, we multiplied so much in um in uh in Egypt that the Egyptians got so scared that they put us in slavery, man. Okay, but continuing verse six, it says, "And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make thee, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed for after thee." In their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a, a power unto thee and to thy seed forever so this is part of the blessings and the promise that he gave to to abraham man out of your seed out of, out of your out of your lineage was gonna which is gonna go through isaac which is gonna go through jacob out of in out of your seed i'm gonna make kings okay I will make uh I will make thee kings and I will make thy nation exceeding fruitful. This is a blessing, a promise from Yahweh Bashim Al Shai. Verse eight it says, And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger. Okay? All the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their power. Now we did get booted out of the out of the land of Canaan or, or the land of Israel. It was called the land of Canaan at the time, but it says here for an everlasting possession. So we will obtain that land once again. Okay. Matter of fact, 
Let me get that real quick. Isaiah 62. Isaiah 62. Here it is. It says, um, Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken. Okay? Now, excuse me. Now, who's this talking about? Who are pursuing uh, Hosea with the first chapter? The ones that are termed forsaken are the Israelites. It says, Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate. It says, But thou shalt be called Hephazipa, and thy land uh, Belua. For the Lord delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be married. So let's go into these words real quick. I know I butchered this word uh, in verse 4. He- Hephazipa, okay? It says, Kapa. It says, Kap Tazaya Tazaya Ba. Kapa Tazaya Ba. Kap Tazaya Ba. Okay? Which means. My delight is in her. And it also says what? Name of Jerusalem. Okay? That's a name for Jerusalem. Right? So. Let me go to this word. It says. Ba'al. Ba'al. Okay? Which means. To marry, rule, possess, own, to marry, be lord over, husband over. Okay? So what? It's saying the land. It's saying the land. Let me go back to four. It's saying the land is going to be the uh, the husband. And Hephaziba uh, he is another name for Jerusalem. Now we know... Jerusalem is is a people before it's a place. So it's saying what we we are the children of Israel are going to be married back onto that land again. And then in, and then it further explains it. If you read on, it says, "For the Lord delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be ma- married." Verse five it says, "For as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee." And as a bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so shall the Most High rejoice over thee. So it's saying we are going to be um, uh, returned onto our land again. Why? Because that was a promise that's given to us. Pursuing back to Genesis, man. That was part of the promise. Let me get this. is uh, Psalms 105 and 8. It says, He hath remembered his covenant forever. Forever. Okay? The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac, and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. Okay? So the Most High remembered his covenant that he made with the Israelites forever. Alright? He, he remembered that covenant and the promises that he made with us forever. All right now, the next scripture I got is it's in uh, Daniel's seventh chapter, okay, twenty six verse, which is which consists of uh, the promises. Okay, it says, "But the judgment." I'm sorry. I could read that. It says, "But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end." All right, so we're gonna take down. This this uh, kingdom, man, this nation that's that's on top right now, which are the Edomites, Idumia, the kingdom of Idumia will be taken down um, by the power of Yahweh Shai by the Israelites. Verse 27, it says, and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And all dominions shall serve and obey him. All right, and that's going into the kingdom of heaven, man. That this is this uh includes part of our promise that we're gonna have dominion over the whole planet Earth. 
All right, and that's that's all uh, through Yahweh Bashim Shai. Okay, the Israelites gonna have total dominion on, on the planet Earth. All right, this is Micah four verse six because I went into I have went into um the first there there are two ways there are two ways to get into the king. I'll just read it. It's, this is Micah 4 and 6. It says, In that day, saith the Lord, will I assemble her that halteth, and I will gather her that is driven out, and her that I have afflicted. So the Most High was the one that afflicted the Israelites. You saw called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. He was the one that allowed us to go into slavery. Okay? But the same one that allowed us to go into slavery and be under captivity under these other nations is the same one that's going to deliver us out of those said perils is going to be is going to deliver us out of captivity it says it right here it says and i will make her that and i will make her that halted a remnant it says and and her that was cast far off a strong nation because right now we're not a strong nation right now we're a weak nation because we're still under captivity we're still under subjection but the most high is, is uh soon gonna give us our glory back. It's soon gonna give us that power back. Okay, that punishment, that cup of uh trembling is almost done with. It says, And the Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth even forevermore. Okay. It says, And thou, O tower of my flock, the the stronghold of, of the daughter of Zion, unto, unto thee shall it come. What's that talking about? That's talking about the kingdom of heaven, the promises that were given to the Israelites. Unto thee it shall come, even the first dominion. The kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. So that first dominion, okay, because uh, like I had mentioned, there's two ways to get in, into the kingdom of heaven because Regardless, if you're an Israelite, you will partake in the glory. But it's best you 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 go on that first trip. It's it's like if you take a bus, okay. If you if you if you go if you get to the bus station to the bus stop, and you miss the bus, you're like fuck. I missed the bus. Let me check the bus schedule. Oh, that bus schedule is saying the next bus is coming in ten minutes. I'm good. I'll just wait. All right. This is this scenario. Is what? There's only one bus coming, man. If you miss this bus, guess what? Your ass gonna have to walk, and that walk is gonna be a a gruesome walk, man. Okay. All right. So it's best you do what you gotta do to make that bus on time, man. Well, really, it comes down to you being of the elect or not, man. Okay. Because if you're of the elect, you will take part of that first dominion. Now, that first dominion is what being delivered out of the said the said destruction that's going to take place. Matter of fact, what's that? I believe that's Revelation 20. I believe that's Revelation 20. Oh, here it is. This is Revelation 26. But blessed and holy is he. See? Blessed and holy... Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. Okay? On such the second death hath no power. What's the, what's the second death? The second death is the destruction of America, man. Okay? That first resurrection is being delivered out of the destruction of America. That's why I saying, blessed and holy is he that, that hath part in the first resurrection. Okay, that's why if you go back here, it says the first dominion unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion. The kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. So that's part of the um, um, glory, man. Okay, now it's best you uh, take part. It's best you do. It's the best way to get into the kingdom of heaven is being delivered out of here first, man. Being delivered out of this destruction. Okay. What I got? I guess I got one more. I finish off in Hebrews. 
Okay, because this is part, and there's plenty of scriptures uh, referring that that refers to the glory that 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 the Israelites are going to receive, the blessings that we're going to receive. But I'm just like I said, I'm just touching a few. All right, so the this is uh Roman, this is Hebrews eight, verse uh I'll start at eight. It says, wait a minute, I'll start at um excuse me, I'll start at ten. Hebrews 8 and 10, it says, it says, uh, excuse me, for this is the covenant, for this is a covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after, the, after those days, say the Lord, <clears throat> I will put my laws in their mind and write them in their hearts and I will be to, th and I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. Okay. So that's referring to the Israelites having, uh, the law, statute, commandments in their inward parts, meaning we're, we're going to be, the Israelites are going to be totally righteous. We're not going to go off anymore. We're going to have total wisdom. That's that's a heavy uh, gift as well. Okay? So I think I hit all the scriptures I wanted to hit. Um, you know, uh, in in order to get into the kingdom, in o in order to receive those gifts, uh, you know, there's a price to pay for it. Okay, but in hindsight, right now, even though it's hard to see it, because the scriptures do say, "Eyes that I have not seen, ears that I have not heard, for what I have in store for them that love me." So, we we have an idea of what the kingdom is is, is going to be, but once we get there, we have we really don't have a clue. We I don't want to see a clue, but words aren't going to be able to describe the joy that the elect are going to have once they make it into the kingdom, man. You know, you know, because here, here in hell, some days you, you know, you, you might have a day off and, and you be fucking bored as hell. In the, in the kingdom of heaven, heaven, there's not going to be one boring day, man. There's not going to be one boring day. Which is hard to imagine as well, man. You know, not not being bored in the kingdom of heaven. That's not going to be. All right. So that's that's pretty much all I wanted to touch on. Um, until the next show, Shalom.